So, hello everyone. Um, my name is uh, Gregor Lato. I'm one of the team leads from Check24, responsible for native uh, app development within the company. And uh, I would like to start start the presentation with one or two questions, maybe, just to get a better over, overlook of the audience. Who of you actually is interested in app development? Come on, I want to see hands raising up. Yes. Who of you is actually doing app development? Okay, still some. And of those who are actually then doing app development, who is on honest question, who is really, really happy with the way that you do it? I feel like gotcha. So I think this talk, um, I, I hope that I can provide you some insights, maybe with the way that we do app development at Check24 and what app development has to do with agile speedboats. Um, I would like to start with, uh, with a guest that we had on our own IT conference last year. Um, so the guest was Ken Beck. I'm not sure if anyone maybe recognizes this name, but he's kind of a legend in IT. And he uh, quoted when he was visiting our own IT conference and looking at the way that we do, we develop, we deploy our app. Um, he left one quote, the way you deploy your mobile app, you should be dancing in the streets about that. Why is that so? Why was Ken Beck so happy about that? I'd like to share those insights with you. Um, we have a small agenda. I'll try to first um, tell you a bit about basically what is software complexity and how can you try to define, measure, or understand software complexity. Then I'll talk a bit about app development and why app development is a complex process at best. Um, I then come to what this all has to do with agile speedboats. I'll take some conclusion and give you some takeaways, and then we have probably some minutes for a short QA if there are any questions. Software complexity, a very, very interesting topic. What you can see here on the right side from you um, is, a, is a dependency graph that is a kind of mathematical data structure, and um, it consists of entities and import dependencies in this special case. That means every dot that you see there is an entity. From a software development point of view, this can be, e.g., a class. Um, every line that you see, which is connecting probably at least two dots, is an dependency, is an import dependency. So that, that can be an import statement. It's a pretty easy. Class A imports class B because probably it needs some functionality from class B. Um, at this picture, at this dependency graph, you can see 1,310 entities, so classes, which are connected by 2,607 edges. So it's quite a, it's quite a heavy thing. Um, this is nothing made up, by the way. It's from a very famous iOS app open source project. I will not spoil which is this. It has more than 300,000 source lines of code in Swift without counting in any third-party dependencies. So as you already can, I'm pretty sure, intuitively see from this picture, yes, this brings in complexity. Every connection brings in complexity. If I change something in class A, in class B, probably I need to make some customizations in class A and, and, and. So the more, the more dots you get, the more connections they have, the more complex software development, and of course, also app development becomes. So it's quite not an easy job. As I told you, this leads us to, yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do to always think about this kind of complexity. And what we are faced is like, yeah, problems, problems everywhere. Um, what do we do or what, what are our chances actually to deal with those problems and what actually are those problems in, in particular? So when you do software development, especially when you work on a bigger project or product, um, like also for app development, uh, probably you need more than just one software developer or one app developer. With every developer that you take in into a project or product, you increase complexity. Just because the process is complex, the more developers you have, basically the more complex it becomes, the more hard it can become. Um, the process chain at all, like developing, testing, QA, deployment, operations, monitoring, there are even some things that a lot of software developers maybe um, don't even think about. But it's not just like developing the app, it's also taking care that your app runs smoothly um, on the devices of your customers. Another question comes to mind, how, how can you deal with app crashes? App crashes is basically in the, soft, in the, the app development world one of the worst things that could happen. Um, a lot of app users see when an app crashes and it crashes multiple times, there are a lot of users who just simply deinstall and remove the app. You lose customers, that is a very, very bad thing. 
how to deal with backwards compatibility. That is somehow the arch enemy of every app developer, backwards compatibility. Basically, you don't have that more or less when you do, would maybe do classical web development because then you just reload the page, the new feature is there. That's it somehow. App developers are, let's just, let's just say, faced with more challenges because we cannot just submit and release uh, our, our increments so fast. And still a lot of customers will have older versions on their devices. Not everyone will update their apps. How to deal with all the devices that your customers have. Now just imagine how many different versions of iPhones, of iOS, of Android, of foldables uh, and intent are on there on the market. This, there is no just like two or three browsers with probably the most current version. No, there is a lot of, um, a lot of big spectrum here. Technical requirements will change very quickly. If you do app development, then basically the, the base speed is dictated, dictated by Google and by Apple because they are doing updates of their frameworks, they are doing updates of their libraries um, in a very, very frequent way. So you can say like every year there are major updates and then you have to think about, okay, what do we do? Uh, do we stay compatible? Can we use new features from the latest iOS? Or maybe uh, we have to think about those kind of strategies uh, of cutting of old features and stuff like that. Features will also change very quickly. Every software developer knows that. Um, you develop features, you modify features, you bug fix features, and then there's a time then when you maybe simply remove features. So you have also to think about this kind of churn that is basically in your project or product. It should be no problem. That's challenge accepted. I would say we can do this. We can master that. But how? Um, this is where Agile Speedballs come into play. Uh, we at Check24 have one uh, guideline which is called Agile Speedballs. Um, basically it means we have to be, even if you're fast and if you, are, if you have like a lot of, let's just say, bigger code base, you still have to be able to change direction very fast. You have to be flexible. You have to be able to react to changes, to react to, to requirement changes. Otherwise, it will be pretty hard to stay on the market. That is the thing about agile speedboats. Be as agile as a speedboat. So take the velocity, but be able to, turn, to change direction from one second to another. So we have, um, let's just say, a very big app community. If you want more details about that, please come to me to our Check24 tent after this talk. Um, when you have a lot of developers, I just told you, with a lot of developers, because the process then gets complex, you increase complexity. How do we deal with that? We have very, uh, a lot of small agile teams. So that means we, we are cutting the complexity and trying to, to derive it into more local, local areas. We have also, uh, or we're managing to, to deal with this complexity because we have a very high degree of automation to reduce this complexity of the whole development process. What does that mean? A very high degree of the automation translated, try to strip everything away from software developers or for software development, which basically has nothing really to do with the way, with the daily doing of a software developer. DevOps is an interesting thing, completely agree, but still uh, you want to focus, you want to give all your developers uh, the things that they can do best, and that is development. You don't want to do anything manually. Um, we have a very, very highly, uh, very highly automated and sophisticated build pipeline. So build pipelines is a thing. Everything that strips away this kind of manual tasks that a developer should not be doing. Release trains. Who of you knows what a release train is? Good. Um, so it, I think this is also a very cool and very important concept. We are doing this at Check24 also. So we're having weekly releases. And basically when I tell you like we have split in very, very uh, small teams, there are a lot of teams. Each of those teams have a kind of responsibility within the big Check24 product. And they can very flexibly at the end of the week say, yes, we want to be part of this week release or no. It's not a problem. We can deal with that technically. If you have, um, if you have, like, let's just say, um, a de deployment pipeline, which is, which is sophisticated enough, and that brings you the flexibility that you can say, it's not a thing that we maybe cannot ship this, this week for this product, uh, but maybe you can ship it in next week. So the last working version then will be still compiled in within the whole big chain 24 app. This is everything. Everything of this is automated. Oh, there was a small pop-up, small update pop-up right now. 
I just switch to manual. <laughs> Testing must be uh, as easy and fast as possible. That means um, if you want to release very quickly and deploy very quickly, make sure you can test your increment. So that means define a, define a code freeze, define a QA session, and uh, don't let anything disturb you from that, because in the way, you don't want to ship products, of course, that will crash, uh, crash for your customers. There are a lot of other tricks that you could still use to increase QA. Um, can tell you more if you come to us at Tech24 to our tent, and then maybe I can spoil you some of the really interesting facts. Another one more thing is um, we have a very, very high level of map mo app monitoring in place, and we also use it. That means um, always keep, always be aware how your API is functioning at, with your user, or maybe it's not. Always have a look and monitor the API routes. Um, you can spot anomalies very quickly if you have clever dashboards which just tell you um, that there is maybe a certain anomaly between iOS, between Android. If you can compare that, you are at a very, very good place. Have a strategy for backwards compatibility. I told you this is the art enemy of every app developer. What does that mean? Think about using feature toggles. Think about using a client versioning. Think about if you have the chance technically of being the owner or having influence in on your backend or maybe on your middleware, then like even you are the king because then you can use client-based uh, versioning and uh, always even plan in incrementally features that you want to maybe ship but still stay compatible with old ones. That means in the all, it all brings us to be able to react fast. I think this is a very, by the way, one of the best definitions I've ever heard uh, that defines agility, the ability to react fast. Conclusions and takeaway, takeaways. Is it working out for us? Well, uh, I just give you some statistics. Right now, um, we have very high ratings. We are at least in the German app stores, um, place three in category finance, place four in category finance for Android. Um, how did we achieve that? Again, we invested a lot in automation. We invested a lot in flexibility and independence, not only independence by teams, but also technical independence, as they, as we think, are essential factors. We have a very, very big app community, which is split in a lot of small independent teams. That brings us to those agile speedboats. Other, um, otherwise, we wouldn't be able actually to react in time. If you have a big developed community and are not basically able to release fast, you will not be able to react in time. If you can maneuver, then at this kind of stormy sea, changes are very high that you will be fast overall. That you can ship fast, basically as fast as you want. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we may now still have time for a little Q&A session, I guess.